Okay, so these are the best free cybersecurity courses for 2024. So this is an ongoing series I have on my channel. Feel free to check out the ones I made for 2022 and 2023. I know there are a lot of paid courses, boot camps, and products, especially in the cybersecurity space, but I made this series specifically for those of you who are looking for those entry-level resources that are more accessible without being behind a paywall. And number one on this list is MIT OpenCourseWare. This is a completely free, publicly accessible collection of learning material used by MIT in their actual courses for undergrad and grad level. You can go through video recordings from actual lectures from MIT professors and courses, download the labs, the files needed for them, auto lecture notes, PowerPoints for more than 2,500 MIT courses, all completely for free. This is probably one of the biggest libraries of free lecture and learning material from a university that is highly accredited and well-known in the tech space. And there are three courses I wanna call out specifically in this video, even though there are many more, but this includes network and computer security, computer system security, and cyber network data processing. On the MIT OpenCourseWare website, you can directly look up any topics that you're interested interested in. For me, I specifically just looked up cybersecurity and these are the three courses I thought were the most interesting. But once you click into it, it also tells you what is available in that course, whether it be lecture videos, notes, basically any reference material used for that course. Some of the courses are from previous years, so you definitely want to keep an eye out of which courses are more relevant and up to date. But regardless, I think this is a awesome resource for anyone looking for college level academics or lecture notes or courses that you can use as learning material to start your career in cybersecurity. Our right, next up is free learning material specifically for those of you who are interested interested in red teaming or offensive security. This is Try Hack Me's ultimate guide for beginners who are interested in ethical hacking. Now I'm sure most of you have already heard of Try Hack Me. It is a very popular offensive security training website and they have lots of different courses, different labs and environments and challenges that you can do, but they also have lots of free learning material on top of their premium material. And a lot of it is catered towards introductory level or beginner level. So you don't need any previous background or experience in ethical hacking to start these courses. By the way, all the courses and learning material that I'll be covering in this video will all be linked in my description below, along with videos I've made in previous years of free resources, since many of them are still relevant today. So in Try Hack Me's free path, they have nine different courses and lessons that you can go through completely for free. First, you'll get started with an introduction to offensive security in level one, along with Linux fundamentals and open source intelligence. Next up in level two is tooling. This covers Nmap, Hydra, Linux privilege escalation, Burp Suite, Z attack proxy, and Metasploit. All these are very popular tools and many of them have free or community editions, so you can use them on your own without having to pay for any subscription or a monthly cost. And it's a great way to get some tools onto your resume and into your toolkit so that when you start creating your project-based resume, which is a video that I'm planning on making soon, you'll already have tools that you know how to use and have used before in projects to put onto your resume and use in your personal projects. In level three, you'll get your first glints of capture the flag practice with cryptography and hashing. This includes a whole module on an introduction to cryptography, cracking hash challenges, encryption, and exploiting a Linux system. Level four is where things can get really fun and that is on the web side of things. This level will include content discovery, SQL injection, DNS, HTTP, Burp Suite Basics, exploiting a vulnerable web app, specifically the OWASP Juice Shop, which is a purposely exploitable web application that can be used for practice, Bolt, Takeover, Neighbor, and other tools and applications that you can practice exploiting. Level five, you'll cover reverse engineering in Windows, basic malware reverse engineering, and related CTF rooms. Level six covers everything that you'll need to know about networking, how to analyze traffic and using Nmap, as well as Snort and Wireshark. In level seven, you'll dive a little bit deeper into privilege escalation on Windows and Linux machines. And of course, a bunch of different rooms and challenges that you can try out to practice those hands-on skills. Level eight is dedicated to CTF practice. I've made many videos on introductions to CTFs and how to learn how to hack with beginner level CTFs, but capture the flag challenges on Try Hack Me are essentially challenges or rooms that have some kind of exploitable application, whether it's a vulnerability that you're trying to take advantage of so that you can solve the challenge and get some kind of flag, which is typically going to be a key or some kind of reference or text that you can submit to prove that you've completed the challenge. And they've also listed a number of easy and medium challenges to go through in this level. So honestly, by the end of it, you'll probably have a lot of experience going through CTFs and it'll be a great way for you to pivot into future CTFs that you do either solo or with a team, since that is also a great thing to add onto your resume if you're interested in pen testing roles or red teaming roles. And finally, level nine in this beginner learning guide focuses specifically on Windows fundamentals and exploits. This includes things like Active Directory Basics, the Windows Registry Forensics, how to elevate privileges using known CVEs, as well as beginner level challenges to practice exploiting Windows machines. So as someone who is trying to get into cybersecurity, one of the main things you want to consider is how to keep yourself and your password secure online. We're online for everything these days, so I probably don't have to tell you how important it is to protect your accounts and your passwords from cyber attacks that are making headlines daily, from government tech to financial organizations. Personally, I use Keeper Security, which is the sponsor of today's video. Keeper is the most secure, certified, tested, and audited password security platform in the world. I can rest easy knowing that my 
accounts are protected with full zero trust and zero knowledge security. So don't wait until a cyber attack leaks your personal information to start using a password manager. This is probably one of the first and easiest things that you can do to keep yourself secure and keep your information and credentials off the dark web. You can get 50% off Keeper Security using my code with Sandra or give it a test run for free with a 30 day free trial. You can check it out using a link in my description below. Thank you to Keeper Security for sponsoring today's video. All right, next up on this list is Hack the Box Academy. Hack the Box is another very popular learning platform for cybersecurity beginners. And similar to Try Hack Me, they also have free and paid products, but specifically for their free modules, this is a really good place to start for beginners. And while Hack the Box is also known for offensive security training or ethical hacking training, similar to Try Hack Me, I find that a lot of Hack the Box modules are also catered towards the blue team side of things or SLC analyst. So specifically, the course path that we're going to be covering in this video is going to be their five-step beginner Hack the Box Academy modules. So in module number one, you'll be starting out with an introduction to networking. This is a very interesting first place to start because even though personally networking isn't my favorite area in cybersecurity, it is obviously very important. Even for those of you who may be interested in IT or sysadmin roles, networking in general is a very broad area to learn that is relevant in multiple roles in cybersecurity. In this course, you'll learn about the OSI model, TCP IP and how data is transmissioned, IPv4 versus IPv6, what are MAC addresses, how subnetting works, and fundamental concepts in networking like wireless networks, proxies, VPNs, and common network protocols. After this, the next two modules are focused on Linux fundamentals and Windows fundamentals. So these are the two modules I would say overlap the most with Try Hack Me because Windows and Linux are probably the most popular operating systems that most companies are using nowadays. These are really great places to start, especially if you've never taken courses or have any background in computer architecture. I would consider taking either or from Try Hack Me or Hack the Box for this since they'll likely be covering similar material. In module number four, this is where this really differs from Try Hack Me and that is covering the incident response handling process. So this module is very much SOC analyst, security analyst. This is going to be someone on the defensive side or the blue team side. Red team typically doesn't get involved in the incident handling process unless they're purple teaming or there's some really relevant piece of news that has to involve the red team involving a specific active exploit or something that's relevant in cybersecurity news that requires the red team's input or expertise. In this module, you'll cover the detection and preparation for incidents, how to recognize IOCs or indicators of compromise, as well as how to implement effective strategies for effective incident response and retrospectives. All right, in module number five, you'll be covering web requests, which is most similar to Try Hackby's module on web applications in their level four. In this course, you'll be covering the basics of HTTP web requests, responses, headers, and response codes, as well as standard HTTP methods like get, post, put, as well as how to interact with APIs, which by the way, is something that the Try Hack Me module doesn't cover. So as you're going through these free courses and material, there may oftentimes be overlap on a lot of these platforms, but there are also going to be things that one platform covers and another one doesn't. So you always wanna be wary of that because for example, API security is a very important area of cybersecurity, especially if you have external facing APIs that are used by customers, clients, external users that may be vulnerable to exploits in the wild, especially because not a lot of companies focus specifically on securing their API endpoints. So even though this module overlaps with Try Hackney's course, I would still check out both and see what information that you can take from either that one may cover, but the other doesn't. At the end of the day, it's really up to you for how you learn, but typically most cybersecurity professionals get into the field through a degree program or a cybersecurity bootcamp. And if you're interested in the bootcamp route, the cybersecurity bootcamp that I recommend is the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp because they have a job guarantee if you qualify and you can get $1,000 off of the entire bootcamp using my code and the link in my description. And it's a great way to start your cybersecurity career without as much of the risk that you get with other programs and platforms. All right, next up is Free Code Camp. This is a platform that I've used in the past when I was learning how to code, and they also now have lots of different resources and reference material for those trying to get into cybersecurity. Most of their courses are blog and tutorial based, so I find that really easy to follow along with, especially if you're following along a walkthrough and, and also doing it on your own side by side. They have a nice selection of penetration testing courses that you can go through for things like how to crack passwords using John the Ripper, web server scanning with Nitro, a guide on getting started with bug bounties, Wi-Fi hacking, and how to secure your Wi-Fi using aircrack and the different stages of a pen test and various different penetration testing courses that you can view completely for free. So this is a great mix of tool-based learning and free courses for anyone who is interested in pen testing. And of course, I always recommend anyone who's interested in cybersecurity to also learn some general scripting skills. So Free Code Camp is a great way to do that. Whether you're learning Python, Go, Java, it's a great platform to learn cybersecurity fundamentals, but also those fundamental coding skills that you may need on the job as well. Even if it's just for something small like lightweight scripting, automation, or 
or just being able to read another developer's code. And finally, last but not least on this list are the free courses on Coursera. So as you can tell, a very common theme, a lot of platforms have paid resources and free resources, but Coursera specifically is interesting because there are courses on Coursera that you can audit for free, but if you want the official paper certification that says that you completed this course, then you have to pay for it to get actually certified. But of course, the information, the labs you cover are all there for you. And the course that I'm talking about specifically is the Cybersecurity for Everyone course by the University of Maryland College Park. And a little bit of a side note because one of the courses that I mentioned previously in another free resources video is the Stanford Cryptography course, which is another great option for those of you who are interested in cryptography that is now also hosted on Coursera, which by the way can also be audited for free, which means you can use and review all the material in the course. The Cybersecurity for Everyone course is about 21 hours to complete, and this would be perfect for anyone who is completely new to cybersecurity. So the previous courses that I mentioned, they're typically for someone who may already have experience in cybersecurity, who may already know what cybersecurity is, knows foundational concepts like the CIA triad, what encryption actually is, why it's important. But this course really comes in and defines those things for you. So if you're completely new, blank slate, then I would probably start with this course as a free resource. They'll cover things like defining cybersecurity, architecture and governance, threat actors and their motivations, the hacking process, and how cybersecurity affects everyone, whether they're working in cybersecurity or just users of the internet, which nowadays is most of the world. So you can really think of this as a cybersecurity 101 course. Now, on top of these courses, I also believe that YouTube can be a really, really good resource for anyone who's learning anything. Um, I've learned so many things on YouTube from YouTubers like Professor Messer, Network Chuck, John Hammond, there's so many resources on YouTube that you can use. Plus you can easily find 10 hour, eight hour courses for cybersecurity for beginners on YouTube and they're completely for free. And it's a really great way to get an idea of whether or not you're interested in this role or in this sector specifically before you pay money for a course or a bootcamp. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any other questions or any resources or free learning material that you've used as you're getting started in cybersecurity that you can share. Let me know if there are any other video topics that you may want to see from me in the future and I'll be happy to add them into my video list. Thank you again to Keeper for sponsoring today's video. And don't forget, you can get 50% off of Keeper security using my code with Sandra. There's a link in my description below. Thank you again to Keeper for sponsoring today's video. And if this video was helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.